Welcome back. In that short little segment, we took what, three phone calls? Maybe looked at a couple tweets during the break. Look over my monitor here. And a three run home run by Josh Bell. Solo home run by Jung Ho Gun. It's a 6 6 game. We're going into extra innings. Just that quick. Just that quick. I, I have no words. I, I'll have the same question that I'm going to ask that I asked after they took that third game in a row from the Cubs. How? Because I don't know how they're doing it. I really don't know how they're doing it. it it's really. It's baffling to watch this team go through the things they go through and so many self-inflicted wounds. And then they do something like this to just completely wipe the slate clean. It's incredible. Now, we just talked about bullpen usage. They just burned through Josh Hader. They don't have Hader. They don't have Jeffress for the Brewers. Let's see what the Pirates do moving forward as far as what they do with this bullpen. Because we just spent the last, what, 10 minutes just crushing the bullpen decisions. So hopefully they get better moving forward. Got a couple Bobs to talk to. We got Bob in Indiana. You're on the nightly sports call. Hello, Bob. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, thanks for taking my call, Josh. Thanks for calling in. Hey, um, I wanted to bring up, um, I guess Trevor Williams is a scratch now for Mar, and I didn't hear who they're bringing up uh, from down below to pitch, but I don't understand why they could maybe move Musgrove up a day, being these games are as important as they are, and if Brault is uh, injured for any length of time, who do you think they're going to bring up to replace him? Because there's not much left. I, I don't know. Thanks for the call, but I, I really have no idea. It's so hard to predict now what guys are coming in. And honestly, I have not kept an eye on who started when in Indianapolis. That's usually a better predictor as to who might get called up. And usually if you keep an eye on what the rotation is in Indianapolis, I might give you a better indicator of who they call up. It might be a reliever. Maybe they have someone else moved over to start. They do a lot of different things with this, with this group, so it's really hard to tell. Um, I have not heard any indication of it yet, and of course, this game is not over. Maybe Clint Hurdle will talk about that afterwards. Um, I had not heard any indication of who might be tomorrow. I hadn't even heard really any difference as far as that was concerned. So that's something we might discover here once this game finishes up. Hopefully it finishes up within you know, the next remote period of time because we might, might not find out until after midnight the way this is going. But, yeah, it, it really does beg the question of what happens, especially when you realize that you have options in AAA. They might not be the ideal options. But they are Mitch Keller, which some people will tell you is a good option. Some people will not. You have Dario Agrizal, who has acquitted himself pretty well in a couple starts now. It's not the ideal, but it's not Neverowskis. I guess that's a viable option. But, yeah, I'm curious to see what happens moving forward. And, of course, losing Brault is a scary situation, too. There is a little bit of, of hope knowing that Jamison Tyone's expected to throw this weekend. That's a, that's a little thing that makes you feel better. But, yeah, they're going to have to probably, probably try, to wait to, try to find a way to get, you know, a, a tourniquet or so to try to stop the bleeding with this pitching staff because it just seems like there's injuries left and right getting in the way, and it just continues to affect everything and how they're making their decisions, especially when it becomes such a big problem moving forward. So what we're going to do now is we're out of time, so we got to take a break here. We'll wrap them and come back. Stick around.